I, I note the chairman's um, comments about your many appearances before uh, uh, committees already yet this year, but um, uh, good to have you here today. I, I recognize that uh, today's hearing um, is, is about our FY12 budget request, but most of the questions that I will direct to you this afternoon in, involve policy. Um, I think you recognize that uh, many of the agencies that your agency has taken have, have immediate consequences to the state of Alaska. Um, when I travel around the state, and I, I do uh, a lot, I think in this, in this past year I've just been about everywhere, and one agency that gets more public scorn than any out there is that of the EPA. And I can tell you that the agency is in a league of its own. We've got all of the other federal agencies involved in all aspects of our life, but it really is the EPA that, that takes the brunt. And it is because people literally feel concerned that their economic livelihoods uh, are, are being put at, at risk. I've had, I've had so many people approach me and say, Lisa, you've got to rein in, Lisa, this Lisa, you've got to rein in the, the EPA, they're out of control, um, they're going to put me out of business. And it, it, it's somewhat amazing to me that the EPA has decided to make Alaska, of all places, its, its, its problem child. And I, I, I hate to put it in those terms, but I want you to understand what it is that I hear from the people uh, in my state. We've, we've got cleaner air and, and cleaner water than just about anywhere else in the world. We've been mining, drilling oil for oil and gas for, for decades. Um, and, uh, and, and yet we have, have seemingly been so singled out by the agency. As I look at the FY11 uh, CR that we voted on, the, the HR1 that we voted on last week, it, it's, it's clear to me that Alaskans are not alone in their view about the agency. Of the 21 amendments that were related to energy and the environment that were voted on by the House, nine of them placed funding limitations on, on various EPA policies. I know that you had a chance to look at those. One of those amendments that was passed was offered by my colleague from, from Alaska, and it concerned the, the air permits that uh, Shell Oil has applied for in the Beaufort. Shell has spent five years and $50 million in pursuing these air permits from the EPA for no more than two drill ships to operate in the Arctic OCS. Just last month, EPA's Environmental Appeals Board rejected those permits, remanded them back to the agency's Region 10 for more analysis. Shell has now dropped its plans to drill in the Beaufort this summer. It costs the, 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 the company even more money, um, certainly more jobs uh, and economic opportunity within the region. And, and the delay truly is, it's 100% uh, uh, attributable to the EPA. I cannot understand, I just cannot understand how it can take so long for an agency to approve an air permit for a drilling rig that will operate 25 to 75 miles offshore less than one quarter of the year. The, the, the kinds of permits that are routinely issued in the Gulf of Mexico take six weeks to issue. And these are in air sheds where there are many more drilling rigs operating year-round. You've got more communities in close proximity. In Shell's case, there was supposed to be one drill ship and the nearest area that would possibly face any impacts on air quality is the North Slope Borough. The borough is 88,000 square miles. It's bigger than 39 states, has roughly 7,000 people spread out across this area. The activities right in, in their backyard over in Prudhoe Bay and, and other fields uh, haven't gone uh, through this, haven't had to go through this level of delay. So again, we're trying to understand. You're issuing a, an air quality permit. It takes six weeks in one region of the country. And after five years, five years, we're still waiting. An, another issue that uh, I'll have an opportunity to, to ask you in, in questioning that is equally frustrating, and this relates to, to a permit um, that we're trying to get 
in the National Petroleum Reserve. ConocoPhillips has submitted an application to the Corps of Engineers for a project known as CD5 that would bring the first oil to market from the NPRA. But in order to do this, they've got to get a, uh, a bridge over the Colville River. Contrary to the statutes passed by Congress establishing the reserve for the expeditious exploration and development of oil and gas resources, the EPA used an arbitrary designation that is neither in statute nor in regulation. This is the Aquatic Resource of National Interest, the ARNI, to threaten or override the Corps' decision and pro prohibit construction of the bridge. Now, I, I sent you a letter about the designation of the ARNI, what standards are used in applying them. I, I just did receive a response. And while I thank you for the response, it does not alleviate the concerns that I have. I'm very concerned that by using this designation, the agency has essentially the ability to preemptively signal a veto for projects under Section 404C of, of the Clean Water Act. And, and what's troubling to, to many in Alaska is that this designation appears to have been used only 16 times in an 18-year period up until last year, but was then used twice in Alaska in 16 months. So people are coming to me saying, what's going on? What is happening within the agency? And, and uh, is this something that we should be concerned about? And I think the answer to that is yes. One of the other issues that I'd like to raise is the, the, the process that the EPA is using to conduct uh, the watershed assessment there in Bristol Bay. Um, I, I have to admit, Administrator, you, you probably have one of the, the tougher jobs in, in this town right now. I think your, your agency has become a, a lightning rod. Many people would like to see it abolished um, or, or your budget completely eliminated. And I, I want you to know ahead of the questions here, I do not believe that that is the solution that many of us have with the issues in the agency. I do not want to abolish your agency. I simply want EPA to do its job. And implicit in the agency doing its job is fair treatment to those that you regulate. It should not take six years and $50 million to approve air permits for leases that companies have paid billions of dollars for at the invitation of the federal government. Um, EPA shouldn't be using arbitrary designations like ARNIs to override statutes that are passed by Congress in order to block critical projects that support our nation's energy security. And EPA shouldn't be process using processes that can effectively preempt projects before applications have even been submitted. Uh, again, I appreciate that you have a very difficult job, and uh, the balancing act is tough. Part of our job here in the committee is to ensure that you have the resources necessary to do just that. And again, we want to work with you to make sure that you have that. But again, the expectation is that you work to do that job. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.